right now. And watch this, I'm going to aim for his cut. And I don't hit hard, I aim for his cut. Because I got eight. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cage Nation TV. There is a tall emptiness there that can only be filled by one Mr. Drew Shannon, but today, this week, we've got a special guest host. Ladies and gentlemen, from Parts Unknown, I am Drew Shaniko. Where's Drew? Drew Shannon, who is my cousin, he suffered a very bad sunburn on his face. Show the clip. Ouch, very bad. He has suffered second degree burns all over his face, so he has asked me, El Druchanico, to step in. Alberto. It, it's very nice to have you on set. Drew will be back in two weeks. He will be back in two weeks. From which he's going to recover from his burn, and he's going to listen to his mother about putting on sunscreen. That's right. Sunscreen is very important. All right, Andrew Shanko. Well, what did you think of that uh, intro clip coming the in from? Unbelievable. Ken Shamrock. You hit him and he keeps making faces. Frank Shamrock. But hey, what, why not? I don't know. <laughs> it's Frank Shamrock. Frank Shamrock. I'm making faces at you like, no, you don't even know. Can't tell. Can't tell. Frank Shamrock, boss root and uh, swinging down in the pancreas organization. This episode is the throwback episode. Throwback. We're taking it all the way back to uh, MMA's early days. And what better way to open up the episode than with uh, Frank Shamrock versus Boss Rutten from the Pancreas Organization. And El Druchanico. <laughs> uh, coming up, we got... Well, what do we got, El Druchanico? We have, according to the notes, we have the news reel coming up. We have the camera in perspective and a whole lot more. So stay tuned to Cage Nation TV with Alberto... What is your name again? Albert uh, Alberto Cameron and El Druchanico. Stay tuned. It's time for another edition of Cage Nation TV Newsreel, spanning the globe to bring you the latest news in MMA. Nick Newell, known for being the talented athlete who overcame the adversity of being a one-armed MMA fighter for the XFC promotion, has recently signed a deal with the World Series of Fighting. Recently, Nick Newell found himself in the headlines for refusing to fight Scott Holtzman, being stripped of the XFC lightweight championship and the messy departure from the promotion that resulted. Newell's camp promised big things were on the horizon, and it would seem that the deal with World Series of Fighting is the big things that they were talking about. World Series of Fighting has a national cable deal with NBC Sports, and Newell's fight, when announced, will likely be on national TV. Congratulations to notorious Nick Newell, and best of luck in your future. Jeff Smith has also signed a deal with the World Series of Fighting. On Fire Management has confirmed that Jeff Smith has signed the deal and he'll be fighting Jared Sanders on June 14th. The move to World Series of Fighting only makes sense for Smith. He was nearly UFC bound when he appeared in the first episode of the 14th season of The Ultimate Fighter. Locally, Jeff Smith has been all over the scene, capturing gold for the Pennsylvania Fighting Championship and securing a hard-fought win over Dewan Dirty South Owens in complete devastation. It's unknown at this time whether or not Smith versus Sanders will be televised on the third installment of World Series of Fighting. We also wish him the best of luck as well. UFC 160 was a big night for a lot of folks. Junior Dos Santos earned a title shot, Cain Velasquez retained the UFC Heavyweight Championship, and Forrest Griffin announced the end of his career. Forrest Griffin earned fame and adulation for being the winner of Season 1 of The Ultimate Fighter. To this day, Griffin's fight with Stefan Bonner in the finals of the inaugural season of The Ultimate Fighter is still easily regarded as the single best fight in all of mixed martial arts. Griffin's career comes to a close with such successes as winning the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship, victories over legends like the Huntington Beach bad boy Tito Ortiz, 
Ortiz, Mauricio Shogun Hua, and Chael Sonnen. We at Cage Nation TV would like to thank Forrest Griffin for everything he's done to bring MMA to the forefront. And it's the Steel City versus the City of Brotherly Love. No, it's not the Pirates versus the Phillies or the Pens versus the Flyers. Gladiators of the Cage are bringing women's MMA to the Pittsburgh area. Representatives of Gladiators of the Cage are very positive about the July 20th event at the Stage AE venue and are very positive about the 14-fight card. Notably on the event is Jamie Chesney of Pittsburgh, and she will be stepping across the cage with Jessica Richmond of Philadelphia. Pennsylvania has been a big proponent of women's MMA within the last year. Complete Devastation brought Courtney Kern versus Maggie O'Neill to the masses. Valley Fight League promoted Megan Gray and Melanie Bremer. And now women's MMA is hitting the metropolitan areas of the Keystone State. And this has been another edition of Cage Nation TV Newsreel, spanning the globe to bring you the latest in local, regional, national, and international news in mixed martial arts. Live June 22nd, 2013, Rocco's Pizza Ray presents World Cage Fighting Championship 6. Experience mixed martial arts live at the Kirk S. Nevin Arena in Greensburg, PA, as Caleb Ball meets UFC veteran Corey Hill in a showdown for the WCC title. This card is stacked and tickets start at just $35. Log on to www.wccmma.com to buy your seats and be there live. For more information, call 570-778-6215. Rocco's Pizzeria, the pound-for-pound kings of pizza, presents World Cage Fighting Championship 6, live June 22nd. I tell you, Alberto Cameron, there is one event that you should not miss, the WCC6. It is going to be intense. Charlie Gathers is going to be there. Charlie Gathers, um, Corey the Real Deal Hill. Corey the Real Deal Hill. He is a very big man. He towers over Andrew Shaniko. Ethan Goss will be there. Um, Ethan Goss, Jason Royer, all of our friends that we met at Complete Devastation and other events are going to be there. You, folks, don't want to miss it. Two hours, 15 minutes away from State College, Pennsylvania. There's no reason really why you shouldn't be going. There is no reason you should not attend WCC. Uh, it's going to be a happening. Couple of uh, updates from the newsreel I want to bring you guys. Um, Jeff Smith did sign with World Series of Fighting. He will be fighting uh, Jared Saunders. Um, and we actually found out that On Fire Management, Jeff Smith's management company, released a statement saying that Jeff Smith is replacing another injured fighter. But still, we saw Jeff Smith right here in our center region. Now he's on to bigger and better things. So, Jeff, we wish you a lot of luck. Good luck, Jay. We also want to update that uh, the Real American Rich Candelina will not be fighting on Pinnacle Fighting Championships, the Pittsburgh Series Fighting 3. Um, not only did Rich's opponent have a have an injury, but Rich is also getting his knee checked out for an MRI. That fight was going to be for the Feather Pinnacle Fighting Championships featherweight amateur title, but uh, now they won't be fighting. I'm sure Rich Candelina would have added another title to his, uh, to his repertoire, his collection. But uh, another day is surely on the horizon for the real American. It is a disappointment, but maybe those two can fight another day down the road. Possibly in our backyard. You Possibly in our backyard. Never know. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are taking throwback fights. We're bringing you the early days from fighters that you know and love. You've seen them fight. You want to know where they got started. The Cage Nation TV, we're bringing it to you guys. The elected official, Drew's cousin from Parts Unknown. El Drushaniko. <laughs> What's the first fight? The first fight is Frank Shamrock versus Dan Handel Henderson. Um, they they got mixed up and actually a submission match. It's uh, not actually an MMA fight, but it's a submission wrestling match for the Contender Series from October of 1997. Check it out. Those tactics we're not used to. The legs coming in first. He, he, he is, tried that right away. He's a leg locking fool. <laughs> well, okay, it's gonna be hard to stay out. 15 minutes. Good thing there's them breaks. And he's going for one right now. And that's a knee lock. Dan's doing a good job. I don't know about that. Good try by that Shamrock That is a bad here. position. That is a bad position for Shamrock wrestlers. Shamrock goes for it for right wrestlers. away. Knee lock. Right yeah. to a knee lock. I'll tell you what. Um, we're not, uh, the wrestler uh, is not staying in good position. Heel hook. He switched to three different things already. Here's a heel hook right here. Shamrock trying to apply the pressure. Yeah, if he gets out of this, he better. Uh, it's hard. Yeah. It. He will not get out of it. Over. Submission, the name of the game. Well, 
We've already seen two different types of matches here. One. That was an amazing, amazing. 1997 seems so far ago. I mean, in my head, 1997 will only be, what, 10 years ago. But we're, we're approaching 20 in a couple years. Exactly. 1997 will be 20 years ago, and boy, does that make me feel old. I feel old. You cannot tell how old I look underneath this mask, but it makes me feel very old. 1997. Fight 2! He's the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock. He's taking on Leon... How do you, how you say? We'll call him Leon. That last name is hard to pronounce, and it's because... Um, Dijik. Sure, why Dijik. not? Dijik. Um, the, Dijik. The Pancreas Organization took fighters from every country in the world. The United States was rep represented. Japan, of course. Um, Boss Rutten fought out of Holland. Leon, I believe, is also out of the Holland, Netherlands area. So uh, this fight ends in probably one of the most brutal submissions in our sport. Let's watch. Look at these. That, my friend, was a brutal submission. Um, there's a reason why amateurs in Pennsylvania aren't allowed to do heel hooks, and it's for reasons like that. Leon's knee twisted and contorted in ways that were just... They were gross. It was... It was, it was hard to watch. But, you know, and that's why we have uh, state athletic commissions to make sure that those kind of fights, the fighters, are safe and in good hands. Fight number three. Trace, if you will. From Friday C. Anderson, the Spider Silva, taking on Rio Chonin. Well, El Shushanko, I gotta, we gotta stop and make a warning here. For you Anderson Silva fans, it's not gonna be pretty. No, if you please. think that Anderson Silva cannot lose, you might want to watch the uh, Ken Shamrock fight and then fast forward on to the next fight. This is probably one of the most spectacular submissions in mixed martial arts history. Watch. A flying heel hook. A flying leg takedown into a heel hook. Anderson the Spider Silva loses in Japan where he made his name. Anderson Silva was huge in the shooter organization. Huge. Huge. He goes to Pride, he loses. He goes to Cage Rage in England, and then he descends upon the United States where Chris the Cripper Lieben was punched in the mouth for talking smack. And then the rest is history. Anderson Silva it might go down in history as the world's greatest mixed martial artist. What's number four? Number four. Cuatro. It is George Rush St. Pierre versus Ivan Mendy Men 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 uh, oh, that, That's English. It's uh, Ivan Menjivar. Menjivar. Ivan Menjivar. Yes. Right now, let's take a look at the replay. Maybe there's something I didn't see. Just slipped there. Now, you know, St. Pierre's landing some good shots, but not many. I mean, Menjivar's covering up pretty well. He's yeah. taken one or two, but I mean, nothing really. Um, Nothing flush, square in the face that would cause uh, no, the referee to stop good. the fight. I don't understand. What's going on here? I can't say anything from this angle. Well, either. it's St. Pierre that stops and points to Jab to uh, Benjavar's face, and the ref just jumped in. Did Benjavar lose his mouthpiece or yeah, something going on here? Something going on. Here. George St. Pierre. Um, it's hard to tell who's ever going to take the waterway strap off him. I couldn't do it. Carlos Condon couldn't do it. Nick Diaz. Maybe, we don't know. I doubt it. Andrew Shaniko? 
No. <laughs> Perhaps. But uh, I've been mentioned before, I recently fought uh, Uriah Faber at the uh, Rousey vs. Carmouche event, and Medjuart looked good, but the California kids still got the W. It's really cool to see where these guys got their early starts. The, the film grade is good, the quality is terrible, but that is living history, friends, and we brought it here to you on Cage Nation TV. Going on next on Cage Nation TV, the Cameron Perspective, I believe. We're going to talk about what it was like to be a fan of the MMA back in the mid to late 90s. Don't you go nowhere. Cage Nation TV returns next. Have you ever feared this happening or been annoyed when something like this has happened? One product can fix that. Secure Connect. Secure Connect keeps a retaining force against the plug, keeping it secured into the wall. You simply place each half of Secure Connect behind the plate, clip them around your cord, and push the yoke against the plug. That's it. You can use Secure Connect almost anywhere. Secure Connect provides the security you need with plugged in electrical devices, and Secure Connect has earned the good housekeeping seal of quality. Every home in America needs Secure Connect. Order yours today. Welcome back to Cage Nation TV. He is Alberto Cameron. I am the cousin of Drew Shannon, who is out with the second degree burn on his face. I am El Drew Shaniko, the greatest luchador announcer in the world. And this is the Cameron Perspective. I leave now. Nothing. And I do mean nothing it makes me sad right here more than when you hear people talk about, oh, this fight was terrible. I can't believe they put that on TV. I can't believe that went the way it did. You know what watching MMA in the mid to late 90s was like? You had to go to your video store, you had to rent a cassette, and you had to hope that you hadn't seen it before that they weren't all rented out. Back in the early to mid, mid to late 90s, MMA was not the sport we, we have today. We didn't have ESPN coverage. We didn't have shows like Cage Nation TV. We had a bunch of guys sitting around and be like, hey, I'll bet you 20 bucks the guy in the karate gi gets punched in the face. That's really what it was. It was a spectacle. We watched it because it was a spectacle. You didn't go around our high schools. You didn't have tap out t-shirts back then. You didn't have UFC t-shirts. You, If you said, hey, you know what? I'm kind of into that ultimate fighting stuff. Oh, that's right. We called it ultimate fighting. It was NHB. It was not MMA. Uh, mixed martial arts was a coin phrase coined by John Peretti of Extreme Fighting. We called it Ultimate Fighting. If you watch Ultimate Fighting, there must be something wrong with you because your mom wasn't letting you watch it, the person your parents were voting for weren't letting you watch it, but we as a sport, we endured. We ultimately, we got past the stigma. We got past everything that made Ultimate Fighting a buzzword. You don't talk about Ultimate Fighting. But now, because we do things right, because we're, we got sanctioning, because we got regulations, MMA is a sport we love and watch. Sure, there's a bad fight on TV. Sure, the fight you paid for didn't turn out the way you wanted to, but the fact is, we can watch those fights regularly. We can watch our TV at just about any given point in time, and we can catch a fight. Not only that, but if you get Comcast Sportsnet, you can catch local fights through Go Fight Live. That was unheard of in the mid to late 90s. There was football, there was baseball, there was tennis if you were really, really bored. But there was not MMA on TV, there was Ultimate Fighting on pay-per-view, really, really late at night, to what dirty movies might have been on, and you hope that your Ultimate Fighting was scheduled in. So we, as the Cage Nation, we should really be counting our blessings this week, the fact that MMA is on TV regularly, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Cameron Perspective. That is the Cameron Perspective. He's a brave man, he's a smart man, this Alberto Cameron. It's been said. That's been said. It has been said. Is that another episode then? That is another episode of Cage Nation TV. Aha! <laughs> Next week, uh, we're actually going to delve into how professional wrestling and how MMA are related. We are closer to being first cousins than we are second cousins, and we got all that coming up next week. But we are not related. No. Me and Drew Shannon are related. But no. No, 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 no. No. Not us. No. 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 Okay. Guys, thank you very much for watching. We will see you next week. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Cage Nation TV, on Twitter at Cage Nation TV. You can also get the late breaking news that we aren't bringing you every other day of the week on CageNationTV.com. I'm Albert Cameron. I am El Drew Shaniko. Drew, we're watching you luck, buddy. Please come back soon. We'll see you guys next week. Adios. So you think they bought it? We are still rolling.
Eltrusanico.